from New York, it's Get Off My Lawn with Gavin McKinnon. Bluesy metal is uh, really good music for talk shows. That was ACDC and Night Prowler. It was a song written about the Night Stalker, Richard Ramirez, who I believe killed about 13 people, tried to kill 20, raped a lot of ladies, uh, doing home invasions. He once left an ACDC hat at one of his murder scenes. That's why ACDC is so inexorably linked to one of America's worst serial killers. He was a rapist who preyed on the weak and scared the whole the entire West Coast was in a state of terror. The only other person who can even hold a candle to him as far as murderous psychopath that scared everyone as far as America's history of serial killers would be, say, Jeffrey Dahmer, who ate people. By the way, he ate a lot of black people, and when they did a documentary on him, his biggest fear was being called racist. And he wanted to make it clear he only ate black people because they were in the vicinity. Uh, that's the America we live in. It's worse to be a racist than a cannibal. But anyway, I digress. And Ted Bundy. I would say those are, you know, if, we look at the, if you look up serial killer on Google, the sort of heads that pop up that you might be wanting to look for, We'll include those three horrific demons. This is where it gets crazy. Prepare to poop your panties. You ready for this? Some guy, friend of mine, was going through my show, and remember when I was talking about the, the indoctrination of our youth and how they're telling all our kids about trans and pronouns and how corrosive it is and insidious it is, and it, it's not as benign as it seems. There's something darker going on here. Well, get this. As they're showing some of the things the teachers like, some of their drawings, we discover, in retrospect, some pretty depraved tendencies. Let's check out the clip from yesterday. Was it yesterday's show? Two days ago. Two days ago. Watch this. A plus every so time. I'm mocking that lesbian trans person. it's my role. Because <laughs> she talks. I win. In, in a. It really a is. It. Z. What is. Stop, 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 stop. Okay, I just said stop, stop, stop. That's her notepad. What is on her notepad? Richard Ramirez, Ted Bundy, and Jeffrey Dahmer. Show the pictures, Dave. So let's, let's show the screen grab of that particular moment. You should have one without me in it. Yeah, show that. All right. So now show me Richard Ramirez with the long hair. Well, that's no. Ted Bundy's face. What do we got? There, there's Richard Ramirez. Look at that picture. And now look at the bottom right of her notepad. Now look at the picture of Jeffrey Dahmer in the orange. All right. Now look at the middle of her notepad. And that leaves Ted Bundy. Look at him. Look at the top left of her notepad. I mean, I'm not a, a big conspiracy guy. I was never really on the Pizzagate train, the Comet Pizza thing. I don't, I, this, the satanic uh, burnings, whatever. I think that was just boring politicians wanting to hang out with art teachers. But this, at the very least, is a sign of mentally damaged teachers in our schools telling our children how to think. Mind blown. I'm just Kurt Cobain. We've got a hell of a show for you today. We are going to talk about the schools. We're going to talk about James O'Keefe. We're going to talk to James O'Keefe about the Project Veritas uh, sting that went on where they went into all these union offices and showed us these guys acting like Tony Soprano. And it's a fascinating sort of progression of culture where Tony Soprano union thugs have created social justice warrior students. We'll explain how that happened. We're also going to talk to our resident slavery expert, Jim Goad, who literally wrote the book on white guilt and slavery, the Redneck Manifesto. And we'll get down to this 400 years of slavery that everything, everyone seems to think built America. Patently false. Uh, and then I'm going to talk to Mike Voris about Alfie Evans, who just died, that little boy who just died. He's over at Church Militant. Remember the controversy recently with Bannon saying the term Church Militant? Uh, 
Mike's going to point out that this b baby was not a brain-dead vegetable that we just sympathetically let go. We murdered him. The hospital in Britain murdered that child. So we got a lot to get to, but, uh, wow, there is some creepy stuff going on here in the West. Jim, are you there? Halfway. You know, I'm never entirely there. Every time slavery pops up, I feel like we have to check in with uh, the resident expert on the topic. But isn't it amazing that slavery keeps coming up? Well, I guess it's a good excuse. <laughs> Seems to be the go-to excuse. The problem is, okay, if you want to blame everything now on slavery, what do you blame on the fact uh, that you were enslaved so easily? What do you blame that on? Well, well uh, maybe you had no technology. Maybe you were living in the Stone Age. I know that's humiliating and it uh, caused shame and, and rage, but that seems to be the fact. Uh, Sub-Saharan Africa wouldn't have been so easily enslaved if they had rudimentary technology. It's a very ugly fact. Yeah, but every, it was the Sub-Saharan Africans who were enslaving them. That's true. Tipu Tip. What's well, great name? Should be a rapper. T i p p u t i p. He was a huge slaver. I did an article. The estimates, just in marching them to the slave uh, markets on the coast, about ten million Africans died. Unbelievable. And and African leaders have apologized for this. They did. I guess it was bad PR, but some of them did. Yeah. <laughs> well, so I get that black people are saying it was horrible for us. We were slaves. True. Uh, we were slaves too, though, Slavs and Irish and plenty of white slaves. But also, That's a myth. I, I finally made the SPLC, and they said I promote the myth of white slavery. Oh, yeah. And that, that's recent that that's been called a myth. It used to be accepted by the left as an unfortunate truth. Because they cared about workers. Now they don't. They just hate white people. That's the main, main <laughs> impetus behind the left. Well, we all know... What's really going on here? The general assumption for most Americans, especially young people, and I would say most blacks, is that America is wealthy. That, that's inarguable. But the way it got there was slavery. So we were founded like the 1400s, I guess. We had 400 years of slavery. Then that went up to the Civil War or whatever, just after the Civil War. And then we stopped, but we still had all the cotton money. And that was the foundation for our thing, so our, our wealth. So every time you see like you and me wearing nice shirts, cotton shirts, and living in a cotton house, it basically came from uh, all this work of the slaves. Okay, do all the iPads and expensive sneakers that black people own, did that come from slavery too? Should yes. they get rid of it? It's like Trump. He got that loan, and then that loan is what did all the work. He didn't do anything. At this, I mean, I, I guess I have to keep saying this. Pretty much any wealth that picking cotton created was demolished in the Civil War. And if that's what caused, what led to all the power and wealth in the United States, why the hell didn't the South win? Correct. The other they, thing, too, I mean, is you're mad at America. America only had slavery. America's pretty new. It was Britain that was doing all that slaving, and we booted them out. Why aren't they the bad guys? Spain doesn't get nearly the bad rep. I mean, Spain was running that that table for a long time. Spain and Portugal, especially in South America, that's where 94% of the African slaves went that went to the New World. Just, Only about 6%. I have to pause. Okay. 94%. Yeah. About 6% came to what is now the United States. But they, I guess South America got out of the guilt rap. So did Spain. They're geniuses. That That's... The polit best political skill is evading guilt. Well, yeah, it, 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 you, you definitely have a case when you say blacks were slaves for a long time and that sucked. Gotcha. But as far as putting the blame goes, Americans had them for 89 years. The British had them for much longer. But if you want to look at the, the big picture, it was Arabs and Jews and blacks who started this whole thing. Yeah, the uh, the Muslims, Arabic Muslim slave trade enslaved twice as many Africans. They took them to the Middle East and they castrated the males. They didn't let them reproduce. 400,000 black slaves came to America. There's about 40 million now. They reproduce at a rate of 100 to 1. Not a genocide. Quite the opposite. And you got 40 million people living in better conditions than just about anywhere in sub-Saharan Africa. Why are you still complaining? 
It's it's unbecoming and unflattering. Yeah, I've I've thought that too about the whole sort of a, a black complaining ethos. Like if I was black and people kept talking about how horrible it is and how weak we are and how we're victims, I would start to go, I'm getting insulted now. Not every time we lose a football game or slip on a banana peel is slavery. I try not to read minds. I'll just speculate. I think a lot of black rage is a mask for shame. If my people didn't have a written language and we were throwing rocks at each other and somebody came who had better technology and conquered us, I'd be humiliated. Yeah. And maybe lash out. I guess, you know, if you just sit there and be humiliated, it'll destroy you. Uh, white people should feel guilty for once ruling the earth. I don't see it. I keep going back to the song Victoria by the Kinks. Have you ever heard that song? Oh, yeah. Victoria. You know, India to Cornwall, like up in Victoria, love them all. We've ruled the world. It was 100 years ago. 24% of the landmass of the, of the globe was controlled by England, this little crappy island the size of Georgia that has no natural resources and lousy weather. <laughs> wow, what a horrible thing to feel, like accomplish, ruling the world with, with what you're working with. And vastly uh, improving it, too. The, the assumption is all these people were oppressed. No, they brought infrastructure. Yeah, I mean, I think psychologically there was a lot of damage done. If, I mean, India is a great ancient civilization. I've got nothing but respect for Hindu scriptures. This, you know, geniuses, my God. Uh, I did an article a couple of years ago, and at the time, eight of the last nine national spelling bee champs were Indian. And the odds against that happening, since they were only 2%, if everyone's equal, that's like, it was like a quintillion to one, 15 zeros. It's like... Give it to the Indians. So good for the Indians for throwing off the British. But the British, should, the British should only feel bad for losing, well, the, <laughs> not, the, not the for one, winning a rich. The one problem with this whole, you're, you're ashamed, that's why you're lashing out, is I'm thinking as a Scot, we were oppressed by the English for 700 years, lost miserably. We, we hear about all the scalps here that, that happened in North America. There were scalps for men's kilts, and we lost our heritage. We lost everything. And we were victims, and we were slaves, and we were human garbage. And even my own family, like in Scotland, I come from a pretty trashy family, and I feel absolutely no shame about Scotland and losing. And I'm, I don't feel any embarrassment about my own personal family being dirt poor. Like, I don't really get this, this shame that your group had, has done something wrong or failed somehow. I think it's only effective if you can guilt trip someone else into giving you something. If they just say, oh, you lost, <laughs> then there's, there's really no, no upside to it. Right. Uh, it's, it's weird. So much of history is shame and guilt and who gets infected with it and who doesn't. And it's weird that it ha people should be more logical, but it is this just psychological dominance submission game. Yeah, you talk, to, you talk to Chinese about the 70 million that Mao killed and they go, yeah, so? Yeah, we still got a billion. <laughs> Who cares? We're doing better than ever. I guess China is in better shape. Uh, I don't know than, than it was a hundred years ago. It was it was dirt poor and a lot of poverty in, in China still. But the brutality, who knows? Maybe you know the end game. They're better off. Just like Muhammad Ali said it. I, I wish it was on tape, but he allegedly told a reporter after he fought George Foreman first first visit to Africa. I think he spent a couple months training there. Thank God, my granddaddy got on that boat. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, he got in a lot of trouble for that. You know, there's currency and shame. All right. Yeah, let's, it's, let's you can trade with, it in. Let's end with the most controversial question. So Kanye said 400 <laughs> years, that sounds like a choice to me. He's later clarified that he meant dwelling in that is a choice. But just for fun, let's look at the worst case scenario, which he denies. The worst case scenario is he was saying that there's something about slaves in, a, in, in North America that made them unable to revolt? Uh, could you have enslaved, say, Polish people or Scots the same way? Is there some culpability there? I think they revolted when they could, right? Nat Turner? Didn't he say, he said something weird about Nat Turner, but I'm not remembering what it was, that he should have just, like, accepted his plight or something? Yeah, but they, they just slaughtered white people. The, the, the black people in Haiti rose up. They didn't have a slave mentality. They killed black, every last Frenchman. Not that I have a problem with that, per se, but what happened afterwards? <laughs> Not, I mean, but that's the thing, like, that Haiti is a good uh, case study. It's like, well, what do you got? It's a trash dump. Yeah, well, that's how they got their nickname, Haiti. Because yeah, I hate hating on it. <laughs> Not hating on Haiti. 
All right, Jim. A wee bit of clarity in a world gone mad. God bless you. Thank you. Mike Boris, are you there? I'm here, Gavin. How are you? I'm great. I'm doing my funny shtick where I wear the same shirt as the the (laughs) guest. But what I want to talk to you about is actually remarkably serious. Um... We just had Alfie Evans die, I think it was yesterday, very recently, and, uh, you know, it's obviously a, an area where, where civilized people have been talking for generations about where you draw the line, but what I find shocking about this case is the hospital, I understand the hospital saying a, a scenario where they go, look, we're just keeping this person alive, they're, 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 they're going to get an infection with this tube in their neck. Uh, we, we don't want to do it anymore. Uh, so do whatever you want. And then you take the kid away and you go somewhere else. That is, is difficult to criticize, but there's definitely an argument against that. But uh, this notion that, no, you may not take your own child from my care, that seems remarkably uncivilized. It seems Nazi-like is what it seems like. Yeah. To, to, to tell parents that... Uh, you know, first of all, your natural law rights, nothing to do with religion, your natural law rights as being the primary, uh, you know, caregiver, taker care of, provider, everything for your children, especially a little two-year-old, almost two years old. And then to say, nope, sorry, we're taking complete control. Uh, I mean, that's just insane. It's insane. But that, that socialism, socialized medicine creep is happening all over the United States as well. Yeah, and I think it comes from leftist apathy when it comes to life in general. You know, the way they shrug their shoulders at abortion and make jokes about it at the White House Correspondents' Dinner. I mean, they couldn't even Google image that word, but they have no problem making jokes about it. It, You know what I just remembered? Do you remember this story about five years ago, I think, where they caught UK hospitals were using aborted fetuses as fuel in the furnace? Mm Mm-hmm. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Can you get more satanic than that? I mean, you know, what's interesting to note here is the hospital that Alfie Evans is at, Alder Hay, had had a long legal track record uh, of, uh, you know, of selling baby parts. I mean, you just name it. Every single thing going on, this hospital had been found guilty of in, in accordance of law. It had to make payments. It lost lawsuits. Just, you know, ding, 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 right down the And here, again, is another example of them doing this. So you look at some of these guys, you're like, what the hell is going on with these doctors that, you know, I don't think that they've heard of the Hippocratic Oath, much less take it. Yeah. Well, they're happy to massacre a woman's face to appease her vanity. And give her giant <laughs> fake tits. Uh, Charlie Gard, that was another case pretty recently. It was ten, where, ten months uh, earlier. And they, it was the same thing, that the parents were not allowed to go somewhere else. Well, that's British law. I mean, that's, you know, it's... Uh, the problem is once the law becomes the law and that's it, now you have to get a court to make an exception to the law in your case. And, you know, the... When you make the appeal for the exception and say, hey, we're the parents, this is our baby, well, the law has already envisioned that scenario, so it doesn't work. And right. that's it. So you're, you're kind of, I mean, I guess you could say it from the outset, you're sort of screwed from the outset. And there is, no, there is no real exception to the law because the law already encompasses all the exceptions that could be brought towards it. The hospital had a doctor's team, the whole uh, uh, sort of healthcare administration establishment, has the say and you don't. That's it. I mean, this is Obamacare, uh, you know, in England. Right, yeah. Hence the line of police lined up in front of the hospital to prevent anyone from interfering. Absolutely. Do you ever you ever hear of George Pickering? Uh, yeah, refresh me. I know the name. He was the guy who brought a gun to the hospital when they said, we're right. going to take your brain dead son off life support. And right. he stayed there in the room and it appears to have worked. It's not like he yeah. kidnapped his son and left. They just said, okay, 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 and sent him yeah. to jail. But it worked. And the, the kid, I, I'm, there's some controversy on whether he's 100% now, but he's definitely alive and breathing. Well, I mean, you look at the Alfie Evans case. I mean, my goodness. You know, they said, oh, five minutes after he comes off the ventilation, you know, this, the, you know that'll be it. Well, he went on for five minutes, five hours, uh, you know, eventually for five days. During that whole stretch, when he was breathing on his own, he was breathing completely on his, fr- on his own, needed no assistance whatsoever. He wasn't being fed. 
He wasn't oh. being fed on me. You can't, you can't not give food to a little tiny baby and expect the baby's going to thrive. You can't not give food to anybody, but especially a baby. You know, everything's growing by leaps and bounds. They need all kinds of you know, massive inputs of nutrition. They gave him nothing. So at the end of three days of being starved to death while he was eventually, or while he was able to breathe on his own, then came the, you know, then he starts to get weak, so now he needs help with oxygen. Well, of course he needs help with oxygen. You just starved the little baby for three days. You didn't give him water, you didn't give him food. They finally did introduce a uh, hydration uh, to him. But again, okay, water, good, but you need food also. I mean, they killed that child. They killed that child. Unbelievable. And you hear this, too, with, with the elderly, where they... Uh will starve them to death and give them less and less food and they'll say, sorry, she's, look how sick she is. And you go, well, you're killing her. Of course she's sick. This yeah, she's sick, but she's sick because you're not feeding her. <laughs> so, okay, here comes the last question, and it's a controversial one. You're the church militant, so we'll see how militant you get. Is there a <laughs> scenario where you do stop? I mean, our technology, our medicine is so good now. My grandmother was just 98 years old. And machines were keeping her alive. She was totally gone mentally. She'd had an incredible life. And the doctors said, asked our family if we'd take her off life support if, if she has a heart attack or something. And we said, I said no. But a lot of Catholics that I know said, look, that's a different scenario. She, it gets to the point where the medicine is so good that you're almost going against God's wishes. Well, there are some cases, and you have to look at this. I mean, I, I'm obviously fond of saying, uh, you know, making Catholic uh, comments here, because it's what we do. Right. Uh, the, uh, uh, the, the Catholic mind is a mind that makes distinctions. There isn't sort of a blanket thing for many things. Many things there are, you know, objectively, you know, abortion is always murder, period. Uh, but the, uh, if you look at a situation, you have to weigh certain things in consideration, one against the other. Uh, First of all, it should not be the hospital making the decision. <laughs> Number two, because it should yes, be the caregivers crucial. or the parents. And that's what uh, they or, said to us. They said, may we put this do not resuscitate sign on the door? And we all discussed Correct. it as a family. Correct. And that's the way it should be. And then whatever the family decision is. Now, uh, okay, so good. We've taken it out of the realm of the hospital. The family's making the decision. Now, morally, what does the family or the parents, in the case of Charlie or somebody, Charlie or Alfie or whatever, what are some of the things that go into consideration here? Well, what are the prospects for, you know, uh, you know, some sort of recovery? Are there, is there absolute, direct, you know, we know this for certain sort of thing kind of evidence or is there not? What's the age of the person? Is somebody, you know, is the, uh, uh, is the treatment that's being offered uh, or recommended or suggested, is that treatment... Uh, somehow going to make the patient uncomfortable or start to feel pain. Uh, how much certainty? How much certainty? Excuse me. Do we know about all of this? Do we have of all of this? Uh, all of these things need to t need to be taken into consideration. Now, the Church Catholic Church teaches that you may not take away uh, natural things like food, water, air, ventilation, that sort of thing. Um, uh, you may not withdraw those because those are absolutely required. Now, if somebody is uh, very far along in a, some sort of illness or disease and they have uh, you know, very little prospects of ever being able to recover from this and you have them on a heart-lung machine and uh, it's very evident that, that the machine itself is doing something and if you withdrew the machine, uh, the person would probably die naturally very shortly thereafter. All right, then you are allowed to do that. You don't have to do it, but you are allowed to do it. But you are not, you're not allowed to take the machine away and take away their food and their water and their ventilation and, their, and all that. You can't do that because right, they right. need that. You know, it's funny how this whole subject sounds so philosophical when uh, it comes up and, and people discuss it in pubs, etc. But then sure. you look at the actual case, cases, and it's a dying grandmother who's 96 being held, uh, uh, kept alive by machines, and a baby who was starved to death. So yes, yeah. there is nuance, but we're not seeing it here. Yeah, that's true. No, there's, there's no nuance here. I mean, this baby clearly could have lived. 
And don't forget, I mean, for many of your viewers who may not have followed the details of the case, we followed it very closely because uh, the Catholic bishops of England got involved in all of this and became a big, uh, a, a big thing. And then Pope Francis stepped in and got involved also. So, uh, you know, for the moral part of the story and for all of the direct Catholic stuff with the story, we were deeply following all the details. The hospital not only said we're making the decision under British law, we're allowed to do that. Of course, the Nazis were allowed to kill Jews under German law, so Nazi law. So uh, if you are allowed to, uh, uh, we're going to administer this case. Our decision is final. You have no rights. Well, a hospital in Rome uh, said some doctors came to uh, Alder Hay Hospital and said, we think there, this, the diagnosis may not be right. Th we think we can help. Uh, I mean, and everyone got involved there in the last couple of weeks. The Italian government gave Alfie Evans Italian citizenship oh, so yeah. he could so he could leave, uh, you know, go to Italy as a citizen. Uh, the hospital, Jesu, uh, 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 which is it's run by the well, it's administered by the Vatican, but it's a regular hospital. Uh, it's a children's hospital. It's one of the finer pediatric hospitals in the world, actually, uh, said he, their doctor said, We'll take the baby. The the Pope had a helicopter. <laughs> the Pope had a helicopter on standby to take Alfie and his parents by helicopter to the airport to get them to Rome. They could have been there in three hours. They could have been there in three hours. They had all the everything ready to go. And the hospital said, nope, we're not releasing him. I mean, how, can you sort of approximate in a more real world circumstance just more evil than that. No, Why do I you want care? riots. I want riots in the streets. We're having riots in the streets because someone makes a pussy joke in private, but you yeah. can't have a riot in the street for murdering a baby. Where? Yeah. What's with our priorities here? Well, for you know, when you consider here in America, in America alone, we murder a million babies a year. Ah, what's one more one over there on the other side of the pond? I mean, then that's how you know. Yeah, the the whole leftist agenda has always been, will continue to be, because it doesn't have God in it. Right. There's no there's no reference to the supernatural. There's no it's all making some kind of, you know, Marxist utopian world here. And anything that stands in opposition to that, whether it's the politics of destruction, because some candidate wants to talk about God or morals or something, that person has got to be blown out of the water. And that's how this is. That's how the world is right now. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's our duty. I want to say hats off to you. You have a slightly different style than what I have. Well, we, we do have the same wardrobe, apparently. <laughs> That's part of my style. <laughs> but uh, I just want to say, you know, hats off to you, for, you guys for, you know, doing what you're doing with, uh, you know, trying to, you know, use whatever, you know, technology, social media technology we have available to us here to say, you know, this insanity has got to stop. I mean, this is complete crap and it's got to stop. Step one is getting the word out. Mike, we got to go, but I got to say you're doing the Lord's work. Thank you so much for what you do. Thank you. God bless and God bless your viewers. Thanks, pal. What's up, fellow kids? Yo! It's just skateboarding around, doing some ollies and some boneless ones, catching some air. It was totally awesome. I did a hand plant. And a, did I say boneless one? Yeah, I was doing those. I was on a half pipe because I'm a big skateboarding fan as a young person. I also like drinking Mountain Dew and listening to rap and roll. Um, Long ago, 2003, Peter Brimelow predicted in this book, he said, how the teacher unions are destroying American education. And in this book, he describes a bizarre phenomenon where Tony Soprano is turning everyone into social justice warriors. The unions are thugs. Teachers unions are thugs. They're way more powerful than the NRA. And they use mob tactics. They'll slash your tires, threaten to kill you, and make sure no teachers get fired no matter what. But that society, that structure, has made teachers into really pro-union people, who, and pro-union people end up really being Marxists, so they end up teaching these kids socialism. So you have like a tough goomba, hey, I'll kill your mother if you don't respect me. You have that kind of person facilitating a purple-haired feminist. What a, and you see this in New York, too. Like, I remember seeing all the union guys. They would be at these marches for Hillary, not Trump, because the union bosses said Hillary would, would be better for us. So you, ha you know they're Trump guys, and they have these Hillary signs going, Yay, Hillary, yeah, we can't wait for that broad to win. She's the greatest. Ugh, pff, I gotta have a shower. But look at this. 
red-pilled wife. I don't know who this is. You better marry her fast if she's single. Going to a teacher's demonstration in Arizona. Check out her sign. It's the greatest. Would you look at this lady right here? Get back to work, commies. Hands off our children. Pakistan flag, which, by the way, the media calls a KKK flag. There's four Ks, baby. Yeah, what is that? Yeah. And look, teachers are so inarticulate. They, they get two months off all summer, and then another two months in holidays, done at 320. It's made them lazy. Oh, we have to teach about teamwork. Everyone's doing this, this project together in a group. Well, I do a crossword puzzle, and I'll mark you all as one mark. So, you know... They, they discourage independent thinking with all this teamwork crap, and they come up with teamwork in those, those days where you do sp public speaking, you know that myth where everyone has to do a talk because it's so important that you know how to do host a TV show? Yeah, because we all do that job. That's a normal job. <laughs> but kids are getting red-pilled thanks to me and the Internet and James O'Keefe. Check out this kid fighting back. His teacher says that women are second-class citizens in America. They're like slaves, and he's got a fascinating comeback for that. Let's see if it's queued up right, Davis. It's a bit tricky to get to. I would think this would be the last argument. He's not being racist. No. Oh, yeah, I know. Hold on. Is that correct? I would think that this would be the last Okay, stop. No, Mr. Beer so he's saying, and keep me small, by the way. Uh, when he's saying, is that correct, he just said, we're slaves, because the, the teacher used the metaphor, we're slaves considered inferior to their masters. It's a trick question, obviously, but... That's the way you are. Is that correct? Were slaves considered inferior to the owners? Yes. So, if women are considered inferior to men, why, why would women not be the ones working? Uh, because it's the good old boy network. This is social control. Oh, Mr. That's a social control. I forgot. Oh, look at that. Did you hear his answer? The reason that women wor don't work and men do, generally, you know, in, the, in a normal society, is because the old boys club is a social network. That's why. Then he abandons that. This, they're so lazy. They're so bad at arguing. Go ahead. I, I, I would get, because women are supposed to stay at home and do what? What are the women supposed to stay at home and do? Well, Matthew, what are the women supposed to stay at home and do? Care of the kids. Okay, what else are women supposed to stay home and do? What is a woman supposed to stay home and do? Well, wait, what else is a woman supposed to stay home and do? I see what you're doing. No, you're the one saying it. What is a woman? I didn't say it in the word. Who said that the woman is supposed to stay home and do laundry? Everybody pointed at the person. Matt, who's supposed to say that the woman is supposed to stay home and do so the retort from the teacher is women have to stay at home and cook and clean. Ladies, housewives, we love the work you do. We venerate you. We love that you cook and clean. Sure, that doesn't take that long. We love that you produce babies with your body, then shape them and nurture them. We tried that. We don't have the patience. It's incredible the way you shape a home, you shape a family, you end up shaping a community. But it's not as hard as man's work, and that's fine. We don't mind getting our hands dirty. We don't mind losing our hands. We, we, we have way more workplace fatalities than women do, and we designed that system. By every metric, men have it worse, including rape, when you include prison. But that's our structure. We made that, and we're fine with it, as long as you keep using your magic baby machine that blows our minds. As Ann Coulter said, right-wingers right are the only ones who see women as celestial. But go to this other kid. He's got to be a cop's kid or something. He's too, he knows too much. Telling his teacher, oh, I assume is black, that uh, cop killings are usually justified. I mean, when cops kill people. The media says how black people are oppressed, how this is just like slavery, how cops are roaming out in right, that, that they're right wing, that they're right wing death squad, that they're right wing death squads gunning down people. No, there isn't. Most cop killings are justified. Most cop killings are justified. So. I'm absolutely so FBI statistics are wrong then. No, your statistics are skewed because it's all about where you get your information from. The FBI. If the FBI, but that can also be FBI. You know how much cover-ups is in the FBI? Just yeah. What did she say exactly? Pause it. Do you know how much cover-ups is the FBI? Do you know how much cover-ups is in the FBI? Nice grammar. Do you know how much cover-ups is in the FBI? See, you know why she talks like that? Because she doesn't read. And she doesn't read because she's lazy. And these students see that. And I just find it fascinating that corrupt mobsters are the ones who begot this crap culture. Who knew that Goombas would be creating socialism? <laughs> it's incongruous. But James O'Keefe 
has gone and found these people and caught them in the act. Get the guy first. I like the guy who's like, I'm very good at what I do. Hey, it's a very difficult situation. I got, I got people who are on drugs. And she five times was fired, and I got her job five back. Times five times I got times. a job back when but she was my on job. drugs. It's almost like being a, a priest. It's my job to protect. Listen, yeah. if you hit the kid. You're like you priests in gangs it in New York. It is. He needs to not tell a soul about this. Mm. Nobody. If this, if nobody brings it up from school, I don't say boo. Okay? So after a certain point, the camera is like are erased. Exactly. That's why I would never want to bring it up. The longer we wait, the longer there's no there's no oh, that now, makes if you sense. go to the Hamilton Board of Education and report this, they're gonna they're gonna call the police and they're gonna call parents and all that. <laughs> we don't do that. We don't do that here. I'm here to defend even the worst people. Oh that's a great but one. I don't want them coming here with a bunch of lies. I need to know the truth. All right, that's great. And then you go, well you just found one mobster James never does that. He never has one video. He rolls them out and he keeps hitting you and hitting you until he knocks you out with attrition. So the next video, you go, that, that wasn't one Goomba. They're all like that. Even the ladies sound like mobsters. Check out this chick. This file right here is from a teacher who had sex with a student. <laughs> okay? They're not going to jail. You good. You know what this whole file is about? It's about whether or not they get to keep their pension. You may be fined Sex financially if you rape the a child. Holy. Is he going to jail? No. I'm being as brutally honest with you as, as I can. Brutally honest with if you. If you are afraid of a middle school child mm -hmm. who called you a and spit on you and advanced towards you, you are in the wrong profession. Kid's fine. Kid's not hurt. Okay. The kid got a scratch. He's gonna give the kid a 65. All right, right? That's enough. So she was describing, she got, she says her brother's a teacher who got in a fight with a student. The kid was bleeding. She goes, he's fine. He's got a scratch. He's not going to fail the kid, right? He's going to give him a 65. Oh, that's how it works. If you beat a kid so bad he's bleeding, just pass him and it's legal. We knew it was going to happen. We... We told you a long time ago that socialism sucks and unions, not private unions, but public unions, like in the book Plunder, ruin society because they are communists. But you didn't listen. So let's talk to James. Maybe he can make you listen. James, are you there? I'm here. Yes. How's it going? Oh, it's busy. Things are busy. We're, we get a suspension yesterday in the teachers union, another tape today. We're... Got lots of tapes, so we're just very busy. Wait, why would there be uh, uh, anyone, any ramifications for this? I thought everything you do is, is doctored, is fake. Everything we do is fake, doctored, I'm a criminal. I selectively edit the way that sort of words are selectively edited in newspapers, I guess. But um, the videos are raw and they're real. And the spokesperson of the union attacked us. And now today there's a suspension and there's a new video out showing this president of the union talking about covering up sex with a f teenage girl student. So we're trying to get the name of the of the student and we're keeping the pressure on the union. The media is corrupt and complacent, so we have to circumvent them, but we're doing what we can. You know, I've got a theory. Uh, that theory is that the unions have been all powerful with the teachers for a long time now, and they've created a sort of socialist pro-union culture that is now leaking into the schools. And it's funny because you look at these union bosses and they seem not like socialists or Karl's, Karl Marx academics. They seem like thugs, like mobsters. So it's like Tony Soprano accidentally begot this social justice warrior culture. Yeah, it's interesting. The, the guy, David Perry is his name, Ph.D. Dr. Perry. If you look at the video, you couldn't come up with a right wing caricature <laughs> of a union executive or an archetype. He answers the door. I confronted him. I door stopped him with a microphone yesterday and he was wearing a track suit. Like a, like a, like a, <laughs> he just like came a, back from bada bing. <laughs> like a, like a billowing, like, like thin paper track suit with a big white shirt and jewelry. And I, and I opened the door and is David Perry, the, this guy on tape, if you haven't watched the video, he, he says, we need to turn it back onto the child. We, we protect the worst people. We need to bend the truth. And he comes out, and I talk to him and he has a little doggy and he's chasing around his doggy. Yeah. And, and then he runs back and came, comes back out and says, I'm sorry. You know, I should have talked to you. Um, he, the arrogance, the lack of introspection, the greed, the rot, the filth. 
Andrew Breitbart would call it the Abu Grave of the Great Society. It's just <laughs> it's just out of control, and and that's why people like me can easily expose it. But I think that my, you know people are very hopeless and cynical about whether this is going to make a difference. My response is: at first, you get ridiculed, then you get attacked, and then the truth becomes self-evident. As the or, or, uh, arc of the moral universe bends, the truth becomes self-evident is what you're seeing here. Well, there's two wonderful things happening at the same time. One, you're exposing the union, and we're seeing them for the, the thugs they are. You, Peter Brimelow talked about this in his book, The Worm and the Apple, where he described mob tactics like slashing tires and death threats. And, you know, they have the same verbiage, too, that guy with his, like, I'm very good at what I do. That is pure <laughs> Sopranos. But also, simultaneously, and, and you're linked to this, too, these students are so red-pilled that they're going into these classes and just tearing their teachers a new ass. No, America's not racist. No, uh, most cop killings are uh, uh, justified. Your, your stats are wrong. Mine are from the FBI. Women don't make less than men uh, due to unfair payment. It's because they choose less. It's, it's kind of an exciting time watching this, this dinosaur of corruption crumble. Yeah, you know, it, it's interesting. The Brumelow quote, there's another quote in the early 80s where... I think a union president said, as soon as students start paying union dues, then I'll care about them. <laughs> but, but, that's perfect. But, th but that's what the guy said. And, and today we have a new video out. People say, why did you release them back to back? Well, because I have to use these tactics to, you know, next week we have more. And the week after that, we have more. And I think this will crescendo. I think it will. I have to circumvent the media. But, the, but that quote from the early 80s, today we have a, a video where this woman is straight up gangster. I mean, she's just like, you should watch it. Union City President Kathleen Valencia is is flippantly using the N word, like just casually. Oh, we haven't seen that one yet. I saw uh, the one is, where she says it didn't fucking happen. Yeah, well, this is well. There, there's a, a longer tape if you go to our YouTube channel and look at the clips on Twitter we've embedded. But there's a 10 minute tape, and she says the kids are scumbags. She <laughs> said, I mean, she's just curse. I mean, cursing and talking in a way that you would never, never expect an educator to talk like. So this is, of course. You know, Orwell said it. He said, you know, freedom is the power to say that stones are hard and water is wet and unsupported objects fall towards the Earth's center. So to see these <laughs> see these union leadership guys just, you know, no, never can happen. You know, just just turn it back on to the child. You know, the, we need to protect this rapist guy who had sex with a teenage girl. We protect his pension. Or He's the not woman, going to jail. woman had drugs, got fired for drugs five times, not fired, penalized for drug use five times and he got her back. Every single time. Every single, but this one clip today, she hands up a stack of documents in front of the camera. See this? See this file? He's not going to jail. You're not going to jail. <laughs> These scumbag kids. I mean, you couldn't, you couldn't, if you're a Hollywood person and you're trying to cast the agent to play the role, you couldn't actually, I don't care how, I know you're a talented artist, Gavin. I don't think you could pull off the fictional thing that these non-fictional people portray themselves as. That's why we call it cinema verite, veritas, you know, the truth, because it's really damning. So this is a, a fascinating thing in political science and media to see the extent to which the journalists, which hate me so much, I mean, they really hate me, to the extent that they can put that hatred aside and sort of, I don't know, you know, not protect child abusing leadership in the, in the teachers union, I think they're going to choose the option of protecting the child abusers and hating me more. But yep. that's why we got to use the tactics to, to slow drip it. Well, I'll do everything I can to get this out there because this is a hell of a scoop. Thank you, Gavin. Keep putting pressure on them. All right. Thanks for coming on, James. Thanks. Cheers. Get off my lawn.